Here in Germany, the country is encouraging citizens to download an app that has been developed to track new coronavirus infections. The app is a joint venture between telecommunications company Deutsche Telekom and the software developer SAP. The goal for the new tracing app is to help break infection chains early and allow the country to manage the return to normality more effectively. Joining us now is Jürgen Müller, SAP Chief Technology Officer. Jürgen, thanks so much for your time. Let me first ask, you know, how this is being received in a country where citizens take privacy so seriously, data privacy, um, how many people are downloading and then actually using this app? Matt, thanks for having me and welcome everyone from Berlin. Um, so we have seen more than 13 million downloads already. That is more than 15% of the population. And that, that is the barrier where also the Oxford study says from 15% on, if there are other measures in place, like uh, physical distancing, like wearing masks, this is where an app really helps. So we are proud. You mentioned privacy. Yes, and the Germans are especially um, particularly interested in data protection, data privacy. We developed this project in maximum transparency. Everything is open source. The public could actually see it. And we see the result that actually now our app already has more than 15, uh, 13 million downloads. Uh, good morning to you, Jürgen. I, I heard that Angela Merkel's chief of staff said this was the best corona app in the world. It was, it was cited in the House of Commons here in the UK as an example of an app that is up and running already. What is, what is special about this app? Why has Germany got this up and running before some other countries? Hi, Anna. Um, I think really the transparency is important because, like, there's no... You don't need a name to sign in. You don't need an email to sign in. No data is traced. No geodata is traced. Um, so that is really, really, really the, the um, corona tracing app that captures the least information possible. And I think that really makes a difference. Then a second point is we worked a lot with uh, Google and Apple in order to improve the Bluetooth um, technology to make it useful to measuring distances because that is not what Bluetooth was uh, invented for. Actually, these improvements go out to the world and everyone worldwide can benefit from these improvements. Yeah, let me ask you about that distance, that distance uh, tracking using Bluetooth. Is it able then to work out if someone is just a meter from another person? Because part of the conversation here in the UK has been it, it's not granular enough. It can't distinguish between one meter and, I don't know, th four or five meters. Yeah, initially, if you had asked me four weeks ago whether we could go live um, with the Bluetooth um, configuration, so to say, that we had back then, my clear answer would have been no, it doesn't work. Um, but here we work very closely also with German scientists in order to find out what needs to be done in order to make it work. And we did like a lot of really physical tests um, and with high tech around it to measure exactly different scenarios. And what we can say is that we have 80, 80% accuracy, whether you are closer to me, um, closer than two meters over 15 minutes or not. And this classification is very important because that is the current model that we know about the virus. Closer than two meters for more than 15 minutes, risk goes up that uh, we would infect each other if one of us would be infected. 80% uh, accuracy after a lot of testing, a lot of iterations, a lot of work with Apple and Google together. Let me ask about, you mentioned German scientists, and I think of, you know, Hasso Plattner and the, uh, uh, the founders of, of your company. But since then, I can't think of, you know, tech breakthroughs out of Germany. Wire cards seem to be there, but it's turned out uh, it, could, it could be a fraud. We don't know exactly what's happened there yet. Um, why is it so difficult for, for Germans to, to create, you know, the kind of tech champions that we see coming out of Silicon Valley? Yeah, that's an interesting one. We are, in, in Germany, we are very good in foundational research, so that piece works. But then uh, the scaling factor and uh, the innovation um, that you need in order to get an SAP up, for example, there we only see very, very few examples actually 
um, extremely few examples. Um, of course, we do have some unicorns as well now, but not compared um, to what you see in Silicon Valley for several reasons. Um, we actually would be happy if we had more tech champions in Germany and in Europe, because I think that is one technology where we as Europe need to become much, much better and need to scale much better. Is there is there an issue with universities? I mean, in the U.S., you've got Stanford, obviously, feeding some of the biggest tech companies in the world. Um, or is it an issue with uh, the government? Certainly, the U.S. government isn't known for sort of funding startups. Is it an issue with venture capital? Do you not have enough active VC here? What do you think is needed in Germany, Jürgen, to, to kickstart that? It's a bit of a combination. The government does a lot. Universities are good. So that is in place. But um, actually, if you want to have like the large checks of uh, venture capital in order to do the international scaling, that is a challenge. And of course, to be honest, if we talk now into, uh, about to, uh, in the UK and Brexit. But if we had one bigger Europe, um, that gives you an initial start, a larger market. And that is one of the advantages that Silicon Valley also has, of course.